the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters proudly presents Angler and Hunter Television. Brought to you by Canadian Tire, Burris Optics, Mercury Marine and Lund Boats, Yamaha ATVs, Browning Ammunition, Browning Firearms, Suffolk Fishing Line, Rapala, Camillus Knives and Cuda Tools, Excalibur Crossbones, and Yukon Gear. White-tailed deer are one of the most sought-after species for North American hunters. From suburban woodlots to backwoods hunt camps, the quest to harvest a white-tailed deer is one that many of us lose sleep over. Ontario offers some great deer hunting opportunities, with archery seasons that run from early fall all the way till December 31st in some regions. The province has a random draw system for allocating antlerless deer tags, and for many hunters, drawing one is like a lottery win. I was lucky to get a tag for an area where good friend John Ward has some hunting property. John is with Camillus Knives, and before we headed out to the stand, he had some advice for choosing the right knife. Yeah, there's quite an assortment available to hunters these days. At Camillus, we make a variety of tools. So if there, if you do have the ability to have multiple tools, or you have an ATV or a bigger backpack where you can put them in, you can truly be like a, you know, like a professional in the woodworking industry where they have a tool for every little task. We truly do make tools for, for every task. So whether you just want one knife that uh, generally will do it all, an all-purpose type design, or if you want something to gut with and then you want something specific to cape with that's good around antlers, uh, or if you want something to eviscerate the deer that's more like a gut hook and that's all it does and it does it well, then you can get that. Or a deep bellied skinning knife where you're not going to nick the hide nearly as often as you would with say your gutting knife. So the tools are there, you just sort of need to know what you're looking for, what you want, and you can build out quite a nice assortment of cutting tools. They're, they're all available out there for you. I guess the million dollar question for a lot of guys is if I was going to have one knife, what should I look for for that one knife? If I go deer hunting um, and I have to do a multitude of tasks, what would work? So I think a knife that's sort of like this one, first of all, the size of the animal doesn't matter on the size of the knife. If you're shooting elk or moose, you don't need a knife that's this big versus a, you know, a doe, a whitetail that's, that's a lot smaller. This is a nice blade length and style. It has a slight drop point to it, so you could get your, your finger right up to the tip of it if you wanted to skin or you wanted to work around an antler. And um, the length of it, is is not too long so i mean this knife can be used for moose elk i mean kudu deer whatever anything um, it really the, the size of the knife really does not matter a knife that feels comfortable in your hand will work all the way around um, i tend to like a knife that's about this size it's got about a four to five inch blade and um, Camillus's line of sight is a, is a new line of cutting tools that's um, line of sight, meaning when you're in your stand, your tree, your ground blind, and you're trying to create a, an area that has good visibility or a good shooting lane. We have an assortment of cutting tools that range from pruners to a large branch saw. These are designed for the specific purpose of cutting wood. Okay, so I've got a saw, some clippers, I got my stand there. Uh, I've got a few branches here I'm gonna have to cut out of the way. And then I wanna see out into that marsh, so I'm gonna go stand there and check my line of sight. And if I gotta cut some there, I should be good. But basically, where I am is the epicenter of where all these deer come out of this marsh. So with any luck, we'll get some action here. I just gotta be subtle, I wanna get in and out of here. This portion of Angler and Hunter Television brought to you by Yamaha ATVs. Now it's getting late in the season here, and uh, I'm in a box blind, as you can see. So far, so good. 
ready to go. I was set up in a box blind on a travel route that John said had plenty of does moving by it daily. Just what I wanted to hear. My chances of punching a doe tag looked pretty good. That just happened. <sighs> My God. What a disaster. One simple misjudgment in distance. Two inches low. And my hunt was over. Needless to say, I was disappointed in myself. And of course, missed a great chance to share a deer with John. Make it happen. No matter how accurate your bow is. like that. That's deer hunting. It seems so simple, yet my stomach is turning. Deer didn't flinch. It also meant that I was headed home and would likely be hunting late into the season, which usually means some nasty cold snowy days and a good chance I'd be hunting through Christmas. My trail cam was getting some pictures of a great buck that had been chasing does during the rut and I knew these does were regulars nearly every day at my stand. So with some luck, I might get a crack at him before the season was over. Okay, we got a deer. I think it's a big buck. He's frozen over there. My heart is pounding. Holy smokes, it's, it's him. It's the big buck. It's the tomahawk buck, he's coming in. This is 
a miracle keep going down into this valley. If he comes up here, we're going to get him. My heart's racing. I'm going to get a second chance. I think. I don't know where he's going to come up. i got to keep an eye out for him here. I just got to keep an eye out for his antlers. He went down into the valley. I'm hoping he comes up. He's a real big boy. He, he went down into that gut. He's got to come up here. Such a close call. With that buck coming in at last light, I was sure he was going to come into range. But like a ghost, he disappeared, never to be seen again. This portion of Angler and Hunter Television brought to you by Min Kota and Humminbird. Hey, whether you hunt big game, small game, waterfowl or turkey, chances are you're going to be wearing camouflage. And for over a decade now, I've relied on Yukon gear to keep me warm, dry and comfortable no matter what Mother Nature throws at me. From reversible bibs and parkas to lightweight jackets and vests, there's an assortment that comes in men's and women's loaded with features that make them practical for any hunting situation. You can trust Yukon gear to keep you in the field and concealed without breaking your bank account. Nearly a month passed and I still hadn't got a shot at a deer. And with Christmas Day upon me, I pulled out all the stops and I hooked up with a good friend who was also hoping to fill a tag. You know, there's an old saying, everybody needs a friend with a truck, but obviously we've got our own trucks. So the next best saying is, uh, everybody needs a friend with a doe tag. <laughs> hey? Absolutely. Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been hunting here for quite a while. I did have a chance at a buck, but uh, I've got a regular uh, doe and a, and a button buck coming out and I can't uh, harvest those deer because I don't have an antlerless tag. And I'm lucky enough to have uh, my neighbor Ty with me here. And uh, he's got a tag, he hasn't filled it yet. so. We're going to set up on these deer. If a doe comes by me, I might uh, send you a text that uh, your tag's been used. Is that okay with you? Oh, I can live with that. <laughs> Ty and I headed out for what we hoped would be a Christmas miracle. Now, Ty had some action late afternoon in front of the stand, but the deer wouldn't offer a shot and snuck off into the woods, possibly heading my way.
my Luminoc didn't go off. I got her. <sighs> yeah, my Luminoc didn't go off. I can't believe this happened this way. That's like my third crack and get the deer with the bow. I don't know how well I hit her. <sighs> she kicked and jumped and her tail went down. And she kind of looked like she was going to go down, but she went over into that thick cedar sort of thicket and now there's a marsh in behind there and it's pretty hefty, gnarly stuff. Her tail's down, she's hurt. We're on a small piece of land, so I'm just going to text Ty. Knowing I hit the deer, but was losing daylight fast, I texted Ty to let him know to head my way. That fast, that happened fast. <sighs> and then went and quickly looked for blood. All right, so I found blood. After spotting just a trace and having a snowstorm in the forecast, we knew we'd be tracking this one in the dark. The Haunting Edge is brought to you by Browning Ammunition. To get the edge over the deer, I used a pair of Burris drop time binoculars to watch for movement. I wore a Yukon Gear's reversible parka and bibs to stay warm and dry. An Excalibur 340 takedown with a 125 grain fixed blade broadhead made a great pass through shot. And of course, a Camillus knife made for easy field dressing once we found our deer. It's incredible, you know, of all the deer um, I ever harvest with a bow. Bucks uh, don't seem to go far, but I've had several does that just run into the thickest stuff. And when you see where this deer is, oh my goodness, we are going to have a time pulling her out. But uh, luckily Ty's with me, and um, I don't know how I'm going to repay him for this, but... Anyway, that's what it's all about. I went out uh, so many times and didn't get a shot at a deer, and when a deer gave me a, a shot, I took it, and, and here I am. No lights, my phone's dead, I'm waiting in the woods for the guys to show up with the truck, and uh, we got about a an easel 200 yard drag through a cedar swamp. But that's hunting, and that's why we do it, and uh, it makes the meat that much more enjoyable when you eat it. <laughs> And now, guess what's out there? Shine the light on that crick. She crossed a river. <laughs> yep. Okay, so I'm going full Blair Witch Project on this episode. Look at this. Coyote's got a deer in here. Worst part is, there was uh, we, we found a, a leg of a deer and some parts of a deer that probably got killed this morning or last night. I'm going to have to shoo them away if they come in here, but we'll see what happens. Look for our footprints. They're right there. After some bushwhacking, she went up in here, crossing a creek and trudging through the heaviest swamp imaginable. We found my doe. And yes, it was a Christmas miracle. I've been sitting in the woods with no lights. My phone's dead. I found this deer and it's Christmas Day. What a jerk I am. I'm sorry, man. Cut but hey, buddy. Ty, the best part is I shot two deer uh, in the camp, so... This is the uh, Bates Christmas uh, Beast of Burden, all right? Yeah. It's my gift to you guys. Yeah. Third time's a gong show. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we got to get to work. Yeah. Uh. <laughs>